The basic idea of the stern gerlach experiment was to find a way to determine if the angular momentum of an electron in an atom was quantized, as Bohr predicted, or not, as Stern expected. They used the fact that the electron's angular momentum would also cause there to be a little magnetic field around each atom, so you can think of them as tiny bar magnets. There was an oven full of silver atoms and a magnetic field with the north and south poles here. The field was stronger near the top and weaker near the bottom, so it produced a gradient pointing upward. Finally, there was a screen. In the experiment, the oven heated up silver atoms until they evaporated, and then they flew out of the oven, with the orientation of each atom's little bar magnet completely random. Then the atoms passed through the magnetic field. The atoms would be pushed up or down with a force that depended on the direction of each atom's north pole relative to this field gradient. Then the atoms hit the screen. Stern and Gerlach could look at where the atoms hit on the screen to learn about the angular momentum of the electrons. Stern expected that the atoms in the experiment would behave as I've been describing them up till now, like tiny little bar magnets that obey the rules of classical physics. Classically, these little atomic magnets could be oriented in any random direction. So as they travel through the magnetic field, they could experience a range of different forces pushing them up or down, depending on those orientations. A magnet pointing in the same direction as the gradient would experience a large force upward. In the opposite direction, it experienced a large force downward. And if it was somewhere in between, it would be a weaker force. If the atoms pointing perpendicular to the gradient, then it would experience no force and it would just continue straight. Because of this range of possible forces, the atoms should all hit the screen at different vertical points. The pattern they'd make on the screen would look something like this. But that's not at all what Stern and Gerlach saw. Instead, they saw two entirely separate blobs of atoms on the screen with no atoms in the center. They didn't have the correct theory at the time to explain this, but we now know that they saw this because every electron has some amount of intrinsic angular momentum in the form of spin, which can only ever take on one of two values. In our bar magnet picture, this means there are only two allowed orientations of the atomic magnets. We call these two orientations spin up and spin down. 